All right, there you go, 5440 on the infamous Jay Moore Show with Pat Porter. And we got somebody else on the line right now, Jay. Yes, let's welcome in B. Brian Blair. How you doing, my man? Doing great, Jay. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we are pumped up. We're excited. It's uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be speaking with you, B. Brian. I remember you were here a couple years ago with a, with a Comic-Con, and the fans have been asking, hey, why don't you get B. Brian on the air? That'd be great. They love you down here. Oh, well, I love it there as well. I mean, um, uh, all through uh, New York and, uh, you know, I remember going to Buffalo. It was one of the coldest places I've ever been to, actually. (laughs) I got frostbite on my ears because they made us park so far away. And, you know, you're right across from uh, Lake Erie, and that wind just blows on you. And it was just one of those cold January days. I left my uh, coat back in Florida. Left Florida. It was probably, you know, 75, 80 degrees. Oh, wow. I uh, got to Buffalo, and oh my gosh, I just I jumped into, a, uh, I don't know, into someplace in Alaska. Oh, my God. It's, it's really weird because every wrestler, no matter where they've been across the world, always has a, bu- a story about Buffalo, I noticed. Or Toronto at Maple Leaf Gardens. They always have those stories. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. Another great venue. But I always loved the, the odd the Buffalo fans. Oh, yeah. are great. And just, um, you know, I, I miss them. I would love to uh, get there again soon. Yeah, that would be unbelievable. Maybe you could come back on one of these Comic-Cons or whatever. One of these tours would be great. I want to talk Cauliflower Alley Club, but before I do, it's c- kind of weird. Like, I kind of, a little bit of the build of how you got there because I have literally been watching you. I don't want, to, want you to feel like I'm making you old, but my whole life. Like, I think about it. I've watched the Killer Bees, the, the biggest thing going in at the time, WWE. But even before that, I don't know where I've seen you, but when they had the old wrestling magazines and you could see people from other around, around the world. I remember you in Black Weens, you huh. know, uh, wrestling out of Florida. And then when you read the book, I've ordered that book, Truth Be Told, and it's kind of weird, like, you know, when you go and and, and read that and, and the, the training and the length of time and the career that you had, when you really think about it, do you ever reflect and say, wow, I've done a lot of things, you know? Well, you know, it's, um, uh, let me just say God's been good to me. And um, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, when you're good to other people, you know, good things happen and uh, you treat people like you wanted to be, you want to be treated. Um and all those things, you know, coming from humble beginnings, if you read Truth Be Told, you know, I was I was born very, very uh, poor and, uh, you know, grew up in Gary, Indiana for 11 years of my life. But um, I never wanted to be poor. And, uh, again, you read Truth Be Told, I, I did a lot of different things, welded mailbox posts, sold sodas in the Tampa Stadium where Mr. Wonderful Paul Wondorf was my hero. Wow. Uh, num- number 40 uh, from the University of Tampa. And, uh, um, then saw wrestling on television and, um, you know, never turned back. I just always wanted to be a professional wrestler and I had a very successful career in pro wrestling. Then I gave Vince my notice in Salisbury, Maryland, um, because, you know, we had been working too many days. I mean, just way too many days. And I watched my partner, Jim Brunzel, missing his, um, uh, his uh, son and daughter's in, uh, important events as they grew up, their graduations yeah. and uh, recitals, all that kind of stuff. And um, so while I was uh, young enough, uh, a lot of people, you know, say, well, you shouldn't have left, you know, because, you know, you had a, could have had a great thing with Bret Hart, which there, there was a lot of things going on, and Vince wanted me to stay, but uh, I wanted to open up Gold's Gyms, and um, I opened up uh, one Gold's Gym, built, uh, wound up building four, and sold them when they weren't for sale, which was a re- really good thing. Then I ran for county commissioner, countywide, and uh, was able to save the taxpayers of Hillsborough County over $5 billion yeah. in a four-year yeah. period, and so had a lot of success. And um, it's uh, just a lot of that's because, you know, I had to work hard. I I failed a lot. And uh, but the one good thing that I did, guys, is I was always a good listener and I still am. I always believe that you can learn something from anybody and everybody. So I I just enjoy trying to learn something every single day of my life. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a definite message in there. And truth be told, as far as uh, learning something and listening as exactly what you're saying. I've even heard some of the old vets of the day, like me and Gene, told me those exact words. Like, all you have to do is listen. It was like, you know, different times back then. What, what, what would you say is your highlight? Honestly, what would you say is your best time, your favorite time in your career as far as the wrestling goes? Probably coming out in a modified golf cart shaped like a ring in a modified pair of oh, underwear yes. in WrestleMania 3. Yes, Pontiac Silverdome. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. You know, and the crowd erupted. You know, you got 70,000 plus people or however many, 90,000 people indoors. Who cares? I mean, who's counting? There was a ton of people. I mean, you could see nothing but uh, yeah. little specks you know, up at the top, but, um, it was just amazing. You know, then I understood why people wanted to be at events, no matter where their seat was. Yeah, exactly. That was a hot time. I remember seeing that on closed circuit when I was a kid. And I, and I remember like, that was the energy a whole lot different back then than how it is today, in my opinion, but the energy was out there. Like everybody was talking about WrestleMania. Oh yeah. I was, uh, that's what, um, you know, because of, uh, you know, around 84, um, I was there when I was there in 83 when we were still WWF and Vince Jr. was the announcer. Wow. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, you know, everything was just kind of shaping up. You could, I, I went to, um, actually to uh, Georgia and wrestled in Atlanta for, uh, and they had TBS and I was on the first tours that went into Wheeling, West Virginia, Columbus, Ohio, and all those places were like sellouts off cable television. And, yeah. you know, of course, the McMahons realized that that's, you know, that's the deal. You know, you control cable television, you control yeah. the talent, and, uh, you know, the world is yours. The world is yours, and he, and he made it his that way. And it's, it's uh, you guys were a part of building that road with him. You know, it's amazing yeah. things. Like, you really paved the way. At, like, we still have wrestling today. <laughs> and it's because of, you know, uh, who you worked with and you guys that helped build that company. Well, it was, it was a group effort. And, um, you know, I always look back to remember with a smile, never to regret. And, yeah. um, just some great times, some great people, you know, of course, one of my best friends of all time, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. I just had uh, so many great memories with him and, uh, him and Hogan and myself all yeah. started in the sportatorium here yeah. in uh, Tampa getting beat up and you know we were the only three that made it out of about a hundred people it's true you're you were out of that camp and it was like you did three summers of that camp you know you don't yeah. hear those days and now they say like in 12 weeks you can be about three summers of camps like that like going you're talking about the toughest the toughest of men like you had to be a survivor to get through that absolutely you had to have a passion for the business you yeah. had to have you know that had to be your number one goal with no distractions and yeah it was brutal yeah brutal well you must still have the passion because after all these years brian you're still you know basically you're the president of the cauliflower alley club and i had a few questions about that if you want to shift over there if you don't mind sure absolutely yeah it's you know it's just um the backstory, the history, like how did this come about? I mean, I'm sure wrestling fans know, and I'm sure, you know, but to the mainstream who don't know, like uh, the Cauliflower Alley Club, it's kind of, uh, uh, the, you got deep history in that, in that uh, organization. Absolutely. It was started in 1965 by Iron Mike Mazurki, um, who uh, co-starred in a lot of John Wayne movies and was also um, a champion in the wrestling industry. And uh, so he made a lot of money at the time, and he wanted to make sure that uh, guys who were, you know, d were down on their finances uh, were taken care of. So they'd meet in California and L.A. at the Elks Club and get together, and they'd have runners who would send packages of money around to different uh, people that needed uh, a little hand up. So uh, fast forward 57, uh, actually 58 years because we didn't have – a reunion in, in COVID. This will be our 57th anniversary, um, rather than our 58th, which really our 58th, but yeah. 57th yeah. reunion, <laughs> and uh, in Vegas. And you know, we give away a lot of money. I mean, I think we've given away well over a half a million dollars this year. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's, it's really sad when you see guys that made a lot of money in the wrestling industry all of a sudden find themselves on hard times because of, uh, you know, disease, sicknesses, uh, hospital bills, divorce, divorces, yeah. um, funerals, different things that come up. And uh, unfortunately, there's no, no union in wrestling. No, there's not a union. And, and guys that put their lives on the line each and every night and for such a long time. And like you say, there's guys that, you know, could use that help and use that support. And that's what you're all about as president of the Cauliflower Alley Club. And that's what the organization is all about. And, uh, and that's unbelievable. But the reunion, uh, what happens at the reunion now? That's happening in Vegas? Yeah, it's happening in, in Vegas from uh, August 28th through the 30th at the Plaza Hotel and Casino. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a great time. I mean, we've got some tremendous honorees this year. And um, once you've been to a CAC reunion, it's, it's addicting. I was honored in, uh, back in 2002. And uh, then I was approached. I, I, I went back uh, well, quite a few times, uh, went back and was Buddy Colt's presenter and just always admired what uh, was done for the other wrestlers. And even though they don't uh, divulge the names, uh, unless the people that are getting help wants their name divulged. Yeah. Um, I, I knew by talking to Carl Lauer at the time, you know, and just talking to some people that were helped, how much good they were doing. And then they approached me uh, in uh, Mobile, Alabama, in, let's see, well, nine years ago, and um, asked me if I wanted to be the president. And I said, well, I'll be the president on one condition. I said, I, I want to be the CEO because I, if I'm going to put my name on something, I've got to have some control of what's going on. And so they agreed to that, of course. So I just uh, got myself uh, a lot more work than I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot more work. But I, I think everybody appreciates you being in charge of the way it sounds out there. But you can buy tickets to, to go to this reunion, right? The, the outside uh, wrestling uh, yeah. fan. Yeah, you can uh, just go to uh, Cauliflower Alley Club. Uh, it's cauliflower like the vegetable alley, A L L E Y Club, C L U B dot org. Yeah. CaulifloweralleyClub.org, and everything is explained on the website. Yeah, it's coming up soon, <laughs> August 28th through the 30th. Hey, what a great place to have it, too, at the Plaza Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. You can't ask for anything better. I, I, I've seen pictures and I've heard stories. Ron Hutchinson, we know very well down here, always comes back with, you know, he, he's all about the Cauliflower Club, always comes back with these crazy stories going to Vegas. He never misses it. And, uh, yeah. No, Ron's a great board member, and, it, you know, he's He's one of the anchors of the CAC. I mean, it, we have a tremendous board. Uh, we have like 30 volunteers, and everybody's got to pull in the same direction. Yeah. And it, it's difficult when you're a volunteer getting everybody to pull in the same direction. Um, obviously, when you're paying somebody, it's a lot easier to tell somebody what to do. So yeah. it's, it's or direct somebody on how to do something, I should say. I don't like to tell anybody anything that yeah. they have to do, but <laughs> to direct them what's best in the best interest. That's right. CAC. Yes, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Brian. We're going to uh, be down in uh, Vegas and check that out. And uh, the tickets will post all that up for you. And, uh, and go get that book. Is that on Amazon? Yes, it's on Amazon, truth be told. And, hey, guys, I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you you and Pat and some of your pals. I, I know we have a huge contingency of Canadians, yes. a bunch of, of great people from Canada coming. And, you know, I feel bad that the price is a little higher, and it's extreme dedication uh, to come from Canada to, to the event, uh, even though the event itself is pretty inexpensive. Um, you know, sometimes flights are expensive. And, but we've got a lot of Canadian on and, yes, um, absolutely. And I, I know a lot of Canadians personally that do fly out and make a weekend out of it. Or uh, obviously, this is Monday through Wednesday, but they do they do take the time off and they go do it. You know. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. And you know, we, we even sing the Canadian national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Brian. Before we go, I just got to get a word in here. Uh, Jay is the official wrestling uh, commentator here. But I, uh, we were talking before we went on the air, and, and I was telling Jay that I, I went back to the days of uh, uh, Bo Bobo Brazil, uh, Lord Layton, and uh, Fritz von Erich. If you remember those guys, uh, kind of dating myself, but uh, that's when I grew up as a kid watching wrestling. 
Wow, that's kind of like before my time. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> that's wild, Pat. I mean, I live. I I knew Fritz well because I lived with David for a year and a half. Oh. But uh, in uh, Lake Dallas, Texas, and uh, it was quite the experience. And that's all in my book as well. But um, uh, very interesting. And Bobo Brazil. I would have loved to have met Bobo. Ah, uh, quite the guy. Yes, a lot even, of fun. even before Brian uh, Brian's time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was truly. Really. Yes, we have an old, we have a really old broadcaster. Oh, thank here. you. Thank you, Jay. Stories, yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, but that's all right. That's great. That's great. You know, I, I know a lot of 90-year-olds that are still hanging and banging and having a great time. Yes, absolutely, man. And that's what the reunion's going to be and we'll see you down there. Go buy the book on Amazon, Truth Be Told, and uh Brian, I love I love that you uh, took the time to talk to us today here on 4680Q. Uh, thank you so much. Thank God you, pleasure. Brian. You have a great day, and uh, it was just wonderful having you tell some stories today. It's, it's fantastic. Hey, I appreciate you having me on, guys. Thanks okay. so much. <laughs> right. Take care, Brian. All okay, right. Be back. <laughs> okay. There goes Brian. Uh, amazing. Uh, some stories the guy told is just uh, incredible. Yeah. No, you know, he, he knows all these guys, and he talks about their, what, the 58th reunion yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. That's a long, long history. That's a long history, yeah. Cauliflower Alley Club, and uh, and, and Brian Blair. I'm telling you, the, the through the the biggest era in wrestling, the old Saturday main events, the WrestleManias. You heard him just talking yeah. about the WrestleMania three selling out. You know the Pontiac Silverdome and ninety three thousand people. You know mm. how many people that is? Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. 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 I think it's one of the biggest in the U.S., if not the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. That's another arena that they tore down. Well, take that, Randy Vaughn. <laughs> take, take that, Randy Vaughn. How dare you bring up Randy Vaughn while we just talked to uh, B. Brian Blair? How well, dare you? There you go. <laughs> Got to throw that in. Yes. And so he doesn't put me in a headlock later on at the uh, the big uh, festival, the yes. Bike Fest. Yeah. Yes, Thunder River Bike Fest will yeah. be down there. For this afternoon and tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, and tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So now I want you to stay away from Jen Downey. No, I'm not going to. I not want gonna you to happen. promise me to stay no. away from Jen Downey. No, not going to happen. No. I'm going to look for Jen. 